So in today's video, we're going to be covering a very, very, very interesting stack here that I have tested and I didn't even notice what the price was of this. This is the iFly Sucks X E stack. The E stands for economical, which means their budget range. However, don't let the budget or the price fool you. This is a premium stack that we're looking at here. And we're going to get into its details, how to connect everything. But I also want to talk a little about the pricing and its competitors and how this one might be annihilating just about every single other premium stack on the market. So whether you're just starting out or you're a veteran flyer, this stack, you probably know this is a very appealing stack due to its price being 53 bucks for a 6S BL Heli 32 ESC and an F405 microcontroller unit with some superb filtration on the flight control. Controller. Yes, it might be a little bit thicker than most, but it does have filtration on board for your VTX. That's insane. So it doesn't have a voltage regulator, but it does have the inbuilt filtration going on for it. Now, before we get into how to connect this and taking a closer look at the components on the boards, let's talk about the competition here because this is where it gets really, really interesting. Now, this is going for 53 bucks. The next thing down the line would be something for around 45 bucks, which is called the Mamba F405, which is also a really great stack, but you still have to add the low ESR capacitor. However, this just gives you a a bit more going on for it here. Now, don't mistake the Mamba F405 with the Mamba F722. The F722 is pretty insane with the Bluetooth and the 9 volt and everything. But right now we're talking about the same category, which is we could call it the sub $60 category because to get a good 6S ESC, just the ESC, which is this right here, the electronic speed controller, it'll run you 60 and above for a good one. And when you're running 6S, you want the best you can possibly get because you're more likely you will either burn it, cause a lot of problems that you can't even tune out, and it'll just an overall headache. However, with this stack here, it is well known to handle 6S absolutely perfectly fine. And I have tested it and I've flown it and I fell in love with it. And this is one of the stacks and I'm also getting another stack coming in uh, so we can do some more builds on it. And I truly, truly would highly recommend. Not only that, in terms of the company name brand or, you know, iFly, iFly is well known. They take care of their customers and they are releasing some insane stuff in the market for crazy prices. For example, with the iFly brand, if this was 100 bucks, people would still go buy it. Yeah, it's that good. So if you're new and you don't know how to install this in your quadcopter, you need to take something into consideration. This is meant for the battery leads to be in the back. So when you install it, this should be the front of your quadcopter. Copter. And why is that? Well, you can see the motor outputs. We see motor one, two, three, four. This is default beta fly orientation. You can flip it to any other way you want, but you have to know what to do. And this is out of the scope of this tutorial. So if you don't know much, just install it like this and you're good to go. Now, if you don't know where the motors go, they go on each three paths. So this motor would go on these three, the back right motor would go on those three and vice versa for everything else here. Now we can also see it has really nice filtration going on for it better than the Mamba stack, which is a really great sign to see here. If we flip it on the backside, we see we do have a shunt resistor and that'll give us the current reading. However, it will not give us the current reading through the ESC telemetry. It'll have a dedicated wire for that. And what's really nice is you don't even have to worry about what wire goes where because you can just go ahead and plug them in together like that and you're good to go. Now, if you're new and you don't know anything, this is your best bet to get started because this is these are the connections that usually confuse the most people. Now, what's going on here with this connector is that since the battery is going to be connected in the back here, it's also going to provide power for the flight controller. It's also going to connect each motor to the flight controller, and it's also going to run the current information to the flight controller so you can see it on your on-screen display. So it makes your life hella easy, and you're getting a premium setup for 53 bucks, which is out of this world. Now, and again, this ESC can run 4 to 6S and has been tested on a 6S and performed flawlessly. However, you need to take something into consideration. Whenever you're going to install a 6S, I highly recommend you install the low ESR capacitor. Now, they do provide this for you, and this is a must on any ESC. Even 4S, add this, your quadcopter will love you for it. So if you don't know how to add these, you have to first find the little minus sign or the little dashed side of this. This means this is ground or the negative or the minus right here. The other side that doesn't have anything is the positive. So when you were to install your, for example, XT60 here, you'll see the minus right there and the positive right there. So those would be soldered into place like that. And then you'd also want to get this somehow very nicely and install it with those right over there. You wanna trim this up a little bit. So the negative will go to the negative, and then there's no side that would go to the positive here. So that would be soldered in like this. A nice way to do this, if you don't know how to do it really 
nice and cleanly is I'd install these guys first. Uh, the motor wires may be up top and I'd bring in the capacitor from the bottom because it takes time for the heat to transfer from the top to the bottom. So you will be able to melt this side before having these come off, but also do this outside of the quadcopter to make your life easier. So and again, the minus will go to the minus here. So let's put the ESC to the side because we're done here with that. So as you can tell, they also provide you with the XT60 with proper gauge wires and they are silicone. So now let's move to the flight controller. So the flight controller is pretty interesting because it takes up to an 8S input. So if you're going to use any other ESC, you can just give this battery voltage and it'll power right up. So before getting into how would you install this in your quadcopter, let's do a little quick overlook over the board components here and see what we have. So right now here we have the MPU 6000 gyro. This is the gyro you need because we really don't need the ICM gyros because we are now limited to 8K in Betaflight. If you don't know what that means, this well, all I'm trying to tell you is this is a good gyro and you're going to be future-proof for a very long time. And here we have the onboard memory. So think of it like an SD card. This is where your black box log would be stored if uh, you wanted to turn on black box and start playing with that. So it does have onboard memory, which is really nice. This is the boot button. If for some reason you were updating it and then you, the power cut off, the USB came out and it got corrupted, then what you would do is just hold this, plug the USB back in and reflash it. And it's kind of like a Windows recovery mode. It'll just help it recover. Now let's flip it on the back side. This is where it gets pretty interesting here. It has, there's a lot going on here. So here we have the OSD chip. And here's a resonator for the OSD chip. I think it's a 27 megahertz resonator. Not that it matters of anything, but we can see is these really big SMD capacitors right here. Now these are electrolytic capacitors and they are very good at suppressing noise or filtering noise. Sorry, not suppressing, filtering noise out. So for example, if you don't know what noise is, noise is unstable voltage. For example, you know, five volts should always stay five volts. Like just consider it as a line just going across like this. But noise, what happens is that 5 volt will jump up, you know, to 10 volt and, and 3 volt and it'll do this. And that's what the capacitors do. They will just clean that out as much as possible. Not perfect, but it will drop that noise and overall be better for your components, your video feed and everything, which is really nice. And this is another reason why they add the low ESR capacitor. Now, if you've ever built a previous quadcopter, you notice when you hit, you know, 50% throttle and all of a sudden your FPV video just went absolutely terrible with diagonal lines, that's due to noise going into your FPV video feed. And motors and ESCs are most noisy between 40 to 80% throttle. That is their peak noise level. 100% throttle gets better and, you know, anything under 40% throttle is good also. So that area right there is the most noisy part of the throttle range. So keep that in mind. If you're getting mid throttle oscillations and you don't have a low ESR capacitor, go install it. It'll be a night and day difference. And um, yeah, sometimes it could hinder your quadcopter untunable uh, without a low ESR capacitor because that noise can also go into the gyro and you get false information like, oh, the quadcopter is doing this when it's actually not doing anything. So keep that in mind and uh, it'll save you a headache in the future. All right, so let's see how would we go about connecting this guy. Well, we see here it says front. So this is very important to always follow that arrow and every flight controller has an arrow. If it doesn't, I don't know what flight controller you're using. Now this is supposed to be installed like this because it is configured or programmed by default to be installed like this. If you want to install any other way, it won't fly unless you know what you're doing. So just always follow the arrow. So this is the front of the quadcopter here. Now let's start with the camera. Let's say we wanted to connect the camera. So the camera would actually go to VI, 5 volt and ground. This is where you'd want to connect your camera. So every camera usually has three wires. Here's a really great example. The yellow wire is always the video. The red wire is always the 5 volt and the ground or the black wire is always the ground. So if we take a closer look here, we see the VI, which means video input. We would take the yellow wire and then what's next? We have the 5 volt, which would be the red wire. And then the last one would be ground and which would be the black wire there. So like that, we would have our camera set up into place. Next, what you'd want to do is you'd want to install your video transmitter and that goes right under it, which is really nice. It's very convenient to install your video transmitter. What you'd want to do is you would also have a yellow, black and red wire. So the yellow wire on the video transmitter, which is also the video line, always remember yellow is video, would go to the VO, video output. Because why is it video output? Well, the video would come in from the camera and then it would go to this chip. This is the on screen display chip and it'll put your battery voltage and you know your altitude or whatever it might put. Put it over the display that's coming in from the camera 
and output it to the video transmitter so the video transmitter can output that down to your goggles. Hopefully that made sense. Next we have the bat here. Now this would be the red wire of your VTX. This would be the input voltage for your VTX here. And this is routing the battery voltage. So whatever the battery you have connected to the quadcopter, it'll get exactly that same voltage. So if you had 6S battery, it would give the video transmitter 6S voltage. So make sure you take note of your video transmitter's input voltage to not burn it. But most likely you're going to be totally fine. And ground is also the black wire on your video transmitter. Now there's something called smart audio and video transmitters which allows you to control the channel and output power of your video transmitter through the on-screen display. So there would be a wire called smart audio, usually it's green for some reason but there's still no standard for it but you'll see it'll say smart audio. You would want to put that on T1 right here and you would enable that for UART1 and we'll cover that in a later video and I've already covered that previously so you can just search drone mesh how to connect smart audio. So after T1 we're left with all of these pads right here. Now we actually don't even need to use any of these because the connector is doing all that however if you didn't have the same ESC then you'd want to utilize this. And the way you would utilize this is, you know, motor one, two, three, four, battery and ground. But again, I highly recommend you just buy them both together. It's a lot cheaper. So you probably have to do a little digging around to connect that part. Now let's take a look at the bottom part here. All right, so now the next thing down the line is the receiver. Now the receiver is very important to where it gets connected because it'll dictate if it'll work or not due to a couple reasons. Now when you have an F4 microcontroller unit, S bus has to go to a specific pad and also IBUS and Spectrum. They can't all go to the same exact pad. So you gotta be careful with that. So here it might be a little bit difficult to see, but receivers usually go on an R pad. And for S bus, which is FR Sky, you're gonna have to use the NR2 right here because this is going to invert the signal because that's what S bus needs. Now, if you're using IBUS or Spectrum, then you'd wanna put it on the R2 pad right here. So there's an NR2, which is for S bus. And there's R2, which is for IBUS and Spectrum. So keep that in mind. Now, if you wanted to connect F port and telemetry, you also have the NT2, which is inverted for FR Sky and S bus. So the N is inverted also. So those two are inverted for FR Sky systems here. Now, if you wanted to connect a buzzer, then you'd want to put the negative of the buzzer here and the positive up here. So now if you wanted to connect LEDs, RGB LEDs to be exact, you could still do it from this area, but it might be a little bit confusing. So what you would want to do for the LED is grab the black wire, put it to ground, the red wire to the B+, and the signal of the LED that controls the color to the LED pad right here. And then that way you'll have a RGB LED connected to your quadcopter. Now we covered where to put the signal for the receiver, but we didn't cover where to get the actual power from. Well, it's right here. We have our five volts, so we could take five volts for our FR sky, which is the red wire. Black wire is the ground here, and then we could put our S bus signal on the NR2 pad right there and that would give us a working receiver. Now, if you're using Spectrum, you're gonna need 3.3 volts. They also have you covered. You'd put the red wire here for Spectrum, the ground, and you would put the signal here. Now, for IBUS, you would wanna put five volt ground, and you wanna go to R2 right here. And obviously, you have to configure it into Betaflight, and I have videos on that separately. So here, you're left with another R3 and T3 pad here. You can use these for whatever you want. Here, we have another five volt and ground. Again, you could use them for anything you want here. R6 and T6 and R1 and T1, that's pretty insane. However, take something into consideration here. So if you used T1 up here for your smart audio, then you're not gonna be able to use R1 and T1 that are connected right here. So keep that in mind and uh, just be careful with that. Now, and again, in order to get the T2 for F port to work, you still have to run a couple commands in Betaflight, and it is on the instruction manual of the flight controller here, and it'll tell you what to run in the CLI tab. And don't forget, after you run those commands, to type save, and that would save and reboot the flight controller. So currently in the market, there isn't anything that can beat this in terms of price and performance. I mean, there's other things that are much more higher performing than this, but this is gonna do almost 99% of all cases out there, which is just insane for $53. And it is a very easy and pleasant thing to actually use, especially if you're new. And again, I'll have a build video coming up very soon. I'm planning on building another budget quadcopter, and this is going to be used in there. It might be a 6S. Well, I have two of these coming in, so I'll make a 6S and a 4S, and um, 
yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting and you could see it again more in action. And these are the flight controllers that are currently being used in the Nazgul 5, 4S and 6S. So you see how great reviews those are getting and um, they're handling themselves very, very well. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And everything here is linked down below. You can check them out. Those greatly support the channel and come join my Patreon. I have a bunch of giveaways. Go check it out and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.